All right, guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel, The Hunter Collective. Today, we've got Philip in the chair. Now, me and Philip just had a chat, and um, we were talking about the look that Philip wants to go for. Now, what Philip said was that he likes to have a skin fade as, as high as you can go um, to get rid of the back and sides, because the bulk and the thickness of the back and sides is, a, is annoying. But he also likes the top to be kind of, like said, as, he likes to style it. He likes to style it so that it looks like he hasn't styled it, right? Correct. Which Correct. is quite—it's quite popular, to be honest. I mean, a lot of the times, a lot of the things that I do when I work with some um, like actor clients and stuff, a lot of it has to look as though I, I haven't been there to do it. It looks as like they've done it, right? So it looks meant to look effortless, but it's actually spent like 20 minutes styling on it, right? But obviously, I'm not going to do that for you today. I want to still make it easy for you to do. But I was just looking through, and the style I felt like to go for is. Bit shorter, bit, bit th a lot more thinned out than what it is as well, because it's quite thick. Uh, and then up at the front and over to one side, like that. Is that right, yeah? Now, looking through Philips here, normally when I do a consultation, I'll obviously I talk to uh, like in general what they want to go for, what they don't want. Um, and then as I'm shampooing it, and as I'm sectioning it, I'll be having a look at the last previous haircut to see where I could change and make it easier for them, or where I think maybe doesn't need the length or the weight and whatnot. But obviously I'll do that on camera for you guys now. So if I just turn it around, so I'm looking through Philip's hair now. He's got a lovely texture of hair. Now this hair would blow dry nice and straight, be left natural like this with a bit of wave in it, or it would curl as well. So you've got a really good head of hair to mix it up. Now I want to offer that position. <laughs> You're welcome. All natural, mate. All natural. Thank you, mum and dad. Um, and I want to be able to make this kind of have versatility to it. That's what. That's what I. That's the first impression that I want to. That I want to give him. That it's. He can be versatile with his hair, so it doesn't have to be what it is now. It can be a bit curled on the weekend, it can be blow dried a bit straighter, or it can just be left natural, right? So I was looking through the haircut. Now, through the sides here, it's got a little bit of overhang, just through here, right? So it just looks as though it's being taken really high and then just left a bit heavier on the top, which is fine. The only problem is it grows out a bit harder to style sometimes when I haven't got that balance. So I want to just take that in a bit for him. And just around the crown, let's spin it around. It's very short here, as you can see, it's very, very short through there but it's also thinned out a lot as well, which I don't think around the crown you want to do too much because it's always our thinnest part. So I want to try and stay away from thinning out the hair through here, but I want to create some natural thinning as well, but I'm not going to use the razor today. I'm going to use more kind of deep point cutting with the scissor. Then you've got such thick hair like this. If you use the razor sometimes on this hair, the way they can thin it out a little bit too much. So I want to kind of pick up kind of more chunky texture for this to really break up the thickness of the hair, which will then be very style for Philip to style. So again, I'm um, going to wash it and condition it and then we'll start off by section into a horseshoe this time. I'm working on the on the blender on the back and sides as well. Right, I've just um, shampooed and conditioned Philip's hair. Now I'm just combing it out from the crown because essentially that's where the hair grows and that's the flow and the basically the growth pattern of everyone's head. It comes from the crown but that dictates where it wants to go. So just combed it out. Now I'll spin around to you later. This crown is pretty much dead centre. As you can see, I pull that down to the knee. It's pretty much dead center, right? Now, it can be good or bad. It can be good in a sense that when you wear it like the way Philip is, perfect. But if you want to the side part, which way do you start, which way do you part it? Now, normally you want to part it from the crown. When the crown's in the middle, it's a bit like, do I go to the right, do I go to the left? So anybody who has a crown that is dead center, which a barber can tell you where it is, certain hairstyles won't work as well. I'm not saying they won't work, but they won't work as well. I want to maintain that crown, but I also want to just try and create a tiny bit more head shape through the back as well. So I want to still try and leave a little bit of this length through here because I still get my fingers through it, which allows me to still connect the top in. So I don't want to take too much off there as well. So I want to try and be working that as my guide to where I'm going to work to on the fade. There we go. So that is bang on the round of the head. So if I turn that towards you, Liam, see head shape we're looking at. So that length that's coming through here, that we can see now, is where our blend's gonna come off to, to keep that nice visual look of the head shape and the face shape as well. So we place that on the side there and that'll give me my blending point where I need to come out of. There we go. So I've got that room there to work through and keep it 90, 90 degrees on there as well. Same for the back, we spin it around. See that works all the way around that side as well. There we go. We start with my number two guard. And I'm going to be working right here. And that way I can still 
create a little bit of length through there as well so I can keep that sitting nice. That'll just bring the back of his head out a little bit square, a little bit more shape through there as well. So I'm gonna put my comb in when I want it to stop. At least I've got a guide to work to. And just follow this all the way around. So I'm going to put in my zero line with my big clippers and we're going to be working, he wants a high skim fade. So more than doing the fade really, really high, which won't, I don't think will work when we're coming to the head shape. I'm going to just open the blend higher. So more than working with the zero up to here and then trying to have a minimal blend to try and get into that top. I'm going to work on a wider blending angle, which will just give the visual appearance of the fade being higher, which I think works again. If you're trying to, if you're taking into account head shape, face shape, blending into the top, etc. It's a good way to do that. There you go. There's a base line put in there. I'm just gonna taper in the temple now a little bit as well. Get a little bit of shape to that. Just slide your mini trimmer in that way. And work up. Nice way to get your line. And just work up and off into that zero. Clip us in along the side bends of the beard line. Bring it up. Start off from the side bend and work it up into where the mini clipper's finished. And work it all the way through the back, up into the minis. There we go. Open blade. Uh, leave it back and then just work it up. Work it up to about there. So I've still got room to blend the one and the one and the half in. So as you can see, that's starting to give that really shorter effect to the sides. And I'm going to work down through the lever until I get down to zero. I'm down on zero now. I'm going to work over my original line, just work it up into the shorter point of that lever there as well. So, number one, fully closed. I'm working up and off. A nice little rock of motion to create a solid line. And then down to my one and a half, working up into that two. So then you're going to work down through the lever to get down to my one. Just have that nice smooth transition from the one into the one and a half. Finally into my one again, just work it up and off. Work around to match. And then we're one and a half. Cool. Now what I'll do is I'll blend in that two into the point of, of transition to the top as well. Can you see how my kind of thinned out ends through there? Can you see that, Liam? It's not, it's a bit, bit finer. So I want to take them off to make it more fuller, balance more as well. <laughs> so when you're working through and you get to the halfway, just step back and have a look because you can start to see if you need to change it up a little bit. So let's say you think, well, actually, maybe a bit more length needs to come off the back. Without you wasting too much time, go straight back to where you were and start working again. But if you're so close as you always are when you're visually working through, scissor over comb, clipper over comb, 
sometimes when you take a step back, you actually see different parts of the light. You're like, okay, maybe I need to work a bit on that bit over there, or maybe that shape isn't really taking, taking the shape that I really wanted to. So start using the mirror as well at this point as well. So just give yourself that little, say 10 seconds, just to check it's going to plan while you're working more than getting all the way around, doing it all and stepping back and going, ah, oh, actually that side's a bit shorter than that side. Maybe I've missed the guide a little bit there or something. So just, um, just, just to kind of cross check your work just as you, as you are working through it. My size one cone, I'm going to work through that darker patch there for one and a half to the one. Now this goes to a one, that goes to a half, okay, in cone terms. And I'll work through, and this is giving a bit more a nicer transition, more from the half and the one into the one and a half as well. Then turn it round and work on the half. The mini clippers I used before are a little bit shorter than these, and this is just like that kind of middle length in between the zero to the mini clippers as well. If you have a look at that, where we created that weight at the top, it's starting to really. Now, if I put my comb on from before, you'll see the point of where I want to come off and build that weight up is really starting to take effect. And that is going to create that leanness into Philip's jawline. So that's what we're looking for. Now that blend comes off perfectly on that comb there. And that's what we're looking for. Keeping that little bit of weight for it to really lean up the face and keep that squareness and not taking it too high. The good thing is Philip doesn't have his glasses on, so he can't see what I'm doing. So it's a bit more of a surprise to you today, Philip. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a look at that, Liam, I'll turn it around for you. That's what we're looking to work in. Crown shape there, all right? Just in front of the crown, okay? I'm bringing the crown into this section, all right? Now, what we spoke about on the couch is that we just want to kind of tidy this up a little bit. Just check that it's asymmetric. No, that's no, not asymmetric. That's all work and balance. Now, this section here looks nice. I just want to kind of break into that a little bit as well. That length's not too bad at the back. It's getting longer and longer as we're working through. But at this point here, it doesn't need to get longer and longer. It gets longer from just past the apex, all right? That's where you get that nice flow. There we go. Take that length off. Just a bit short of that side as well. And that'll do. I'm past the apex, I'm going to start getting slightly longer. <laughs> Coming that section forward into that section. Take that section and always bring it back to the recession point. Bring it back, not much coming off that neither. Straight up, not looking too bad. Let's break into the guide there, I've got a guide from my clipper work. I was saying before, at the start of the video, I want to have a chunky texture, really help to thin the hair out as well. Move it back there, maintain length of the fringe. There we go, not so much is coming off. Now we'll bring everything over this way, back to the session point to keep that length in the fringe. I'm going to take that off, it doesn't need that, it's going to hang over and just check that everything works well on the blend from the clippers as well. So a little bit more will come off now, we've horse shoot it before. But I'm keeping my, hat, my my fingers completely parallel with the sides as well, so I'm not dropping it in. If I got to here and dropped it in like that, I'd take his crown off. And then we're working parallel from the side of the head. There we go. So then we kept crowning, we kept lengthening. A nice blend coming through here now as well. I'm starting to balance the top through now as well. Right now. <laughs> Another recession point now. Everything straight up. Pick up the lens. Got a guide there and a guide here. You can see quite a lot on this side. And into that crown. There we go, nothing really comes off. Move it across. Just isolate that out from the recession point. We'll bring this down. And we'll put that nice and straight. So essentially what we're getting is we're getting blends at this point, we're getting more length through the middle, but as it stands up, it will all match in 
perfectly. No. So while it's wet, I'm going to work on the fringe. So I'm going to section just at that recession point. I'll pick it up. I'm going to break this up now. So I'm going to work straight in, quite big chunks. Okay, so what we're creating is that kind of look, all right? Really broken up, okay? Quite thick, chunky section. This will just help him when it comes to blow drying, because it'll thin it out for him as well. Not too low down, so it doesn't poke out of the front. Don't forget, we put, we put the fringe. That'll give a bit of structure to that as well. And again, we're going to work through here. The main thing we'll do in a minute is we'll dry it off and we'll finish the texture as well, so we see exactly how it's going to fall. <laughs> Good thing is it's also thinning the hair out slightly as well. But like I always say, I try and do the thinning visually, more than just using thinnesses or something like that, just because I find it just kind of thins it generically. Right, so before I dry it off, I'm going to make sure this crown is sitting right. So I'm going to bring the crown down and just make sure we put any little bits off. But because we work from the crown, it's going to fall nicely. There we go. Nice. Right, let's try this through now. Not using a round brush to really make it kind of to add shape and whatnot. I'm just going to use the cut and the kind of the, the vent through this brush to help it kind of give a bit more of a straighter face. You know, look at already, Liam, what it's doing is it's creating a kind of almost a bit of texture through this as well. When you wait the brush, it's starting to straighten it off slightly but without it looking too overly blow dry. That's what I like about this brush. We're going to dry it from right to left, left to right. We're not making it look too pin straight, just giving it a bit of natural movement in there as well. I'll choose the fingers to finish. So we've got a nice little bit of straighter finish that, but you're still working with a lot of his natural curls, natural wave. Again, I thought this is the key for this. So if it was too pin straight, you could tell. But if it was too curly, you could also say it hasn't done much with it. So find the balance, which I think this brush helps. Now what I'll do is I'll finish by thinning out a bit more. Just in the areas that I think feel quite thick. So just through here feels quite thick. Do a great that looks. Now I'm gonna finish with a bit of the Regal Gentleman Matte Clay. I think this is a really good product for that. It's got that kind of dry matte finish but a really strong hold as well so i think that'll work really nicely for phillips here so we're only going to use a literally a pea size amount so looking at that in the palm of your hand okay and make sure you work it all the way around right through your fingers and just keep working you'll feel it warm up in your hands as well and then work all the way through, start from the crown and rubbing it in like a shampoo. And then start the desired look. And what I'll do is using the same brush as before, I'll work that off from the crown. Really sure how nice that crown has been worked towards. So you have the straighter element at the front, you've got a little bit of movement to curl, and then just gonna sporadically move my fingers to make it look as though it's almost like again like windswept effortless kind of look. Wanna put your glasses on, mate, and have a little look at that. <laughs> How's that look for you? Uh, yeah? yeah? Happy, yeah? Yeah. Wicked man. So do you see that fade is still low? Because you stretch the blend out, it looks a lot higher. But it's also allowed me to keep that weight through the corner to balance into having a more top heavy haircut as well. You see what I mean? Nice, isn't it? Delicious. What's that? Delicious. <laughs> no one's ever said my haircuts are delicious, mate. You're welcome. <laughs> well, so essentially, it's a very, it's kind of like a top heavy haircut with a skin fade, right? But it's that kind of the thing I wanted, my, my play on what I was thinking was the kind of effortless finish. So when you've got someone like Philip's texture, you've got a real kind of like wave, curl, you could straighten it, you could diffuse it, make it super curly, you could like kind of let, you know, let it just have a wave in it. Um, you, I think 
by making sure it's balanced all the way through, it's not longer anywhere, will really help him because if you, then you can you can manipulate different styles. So, you know, if you left like say one side mega long, then obviously that side's going to dictate where how the rest of the hair looks. And since you've got like say a, a super long section through here, it's not going to really work in like a curly haircut because the one side's going to be a lot puffier than the other. So um, yeah, essentially just cuts even on the top. Um, point cuts towards the back, a bit more blunt through the fringe to keep that support in it. Um, and then just kind of deep point cutting to break up the thickness, add a bit of texture to it. Wasn't using the razor on this one. I think it's deserved a bit more of a kind of point cutter, um, put point cut and finish really, should I say. And then obviously went down to a skin fable, kept the, the, the blend area wider. And then finished off a little bit of um, Regal Gentleman my clay just to give that kind of drier, effortless finish to it as well. And that is your end result. Thanks, man.